Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're deciding whether to buy property in a limited company or your own name, then this video is going to explore the pros and cons of each particular one and which one could be best for you. Today, I'm going to simplify and guide you through some of the factors that you should be thinking about and considering when starting a property business, be that in your own name or within a limited company. If you're new here, my name's Matt. I work for a bank by day. I invest in property on the side and I simplify insights on property, productivity and tech. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel for loads more property videos and don't forget to hit the like button just below. Okay, so we're going to explore tax, your property business plans, succession planning, product availability, and what your current income is today to really understand should you be investing in a limited company or within your own name. First things first, I'm not a broker and I'm also not an accountant. So the best thing that you can do is go and speak to a registered professional who will be able to give you bespoke and solid advice depending on your own personal circumstances. I highly, highly recommend it. So over five years ago, the property market was definitely more in favor of being held in a personal name. There are actually very few limited company mortgages out there. And that meant that the rates are very high and from a limited company perspective, it wasn't very competitive. But fast forward a few years, the government over the past three, four, five years have made a lot of changes to property and tax held in your own personal name. One of the big changes was section 24. Now this is where if you held a property in your own name, you could use the interest on the mortgage payments as a deductible expense off your accounts. Whereas what the government were doing is slowly phasing it out until 2020 to 2021. However, one of the good things is that this still doesn't apply within a limited company. So if you have a property in a limited co, you can still deduct your interest payments from your mortgage as a deductible expense. And what this really hints at was that the government is starting to take a step away from accidental landlords and those who aren't operating professionally. So the big question is, why should you buy in a limited company? Well, the options are endless and there are lots of different kind of what ifs and buts that could determine whether one is good for you or not. It's not always the case that a limited company is always best. The reality is a limited company might not be for everyone depending on whatever your property strategies are and what route you want to take. And the reason being is that limited companies come with extra costs, they come with accountancy fees, and that's something that you should factor into your overall budget. And there are three key areas that you should be thinking about when setting up a property company within a limited company structure. And that falls down into tax, your property business plan and succession planning. So if you've got a full-time salary and you're a higher rate taxpayer in the UK, then this means that you're going to be paying 40% tax on anything above that particular threshold. This means on top of your normal day-to-day -day nine to five job, any property income that you do make would be taxed at 40%. So you're almost losing half of the income that you're making through having a property. Now this is where having a limited company could be beneficial if you're a higher rate taxpayer because the corporation tax currently in 2020 is only 19%. This means that any profits that you make within the company structure are taxed half the amount they would be if you had it within your own personal name. So that's 19% versus 40%. It also means that it would be immune to things like national insurance and potentially student loan repayments as well. And if you needed to use the cash for day-to-day -day living that is made within the property company itself, then you can actually pay the first £2,000 as dividends completely tax-free. And then after that, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, the tax rate is 32.5%. And if you're a basic rate taxpayer, that's only 7.5% after the first free £2,000 that you get. So it means that you'll be paying less tax overall. Now playing devil's advocate a little bit here, you also have to pay things like accountancy fees when you're operating within a limited company. So the savings that you might make from a tax perspective might not be worth it when you factor in the accountancy fees, which could be around a thousand pound a month for a buy to let property. It depends on how big the accountancy firm is and whether they're specialist or not. And that leads me nicely onto my next point. And this is around what are your property business plans and what is the strategies really that you're going to be following as you build your property portfolio. It could be that you're just interested in one or two buy to lets and that you want to have it nicely tick away until you're 60 or 70 years old. And then that's gonna be your nice retirement nest egg. Or you might be wanting to build a profitable, wildly successful business within a limited company structure, which means that actually, if you can hold on to the profits made within the company, you don't need to pay yourself, then you can just reinvest that at 19% tax within the company to grow faster rather than paying yourself and then losing half of it to tax slash insurance student loan repayments. You'll have a different tax bracket for the properties that you invest the money into, and that'll just be corporation tax, versus paying money into your own name, which will then have tax slash insurance student loan. So you can separate those two and be more tax efficient and the next point is succession planning. Now, this is a bit of a grim topic, but it's wise to think about from a financially savvy perspective 
what would happen if you passed away unexpectedly or you just got to an old age and then passed away? What would happen to the wealth that's built within your properties that you have? You know, would it be in your personal name and therefore subject to loads of inheritance tax? If you've ever read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, you'll understand the basic foundations of why the rich get richer and how they hold on to what is known as generational wealth. If you spent an entire lifetime building an incredible property portfolio of say 20 to 30 properties and that was all within your own personal name, if you passed away and the value of that estate is over 325,000 pound, then when it is passed down to your children, then you would see almost half of that taxed at around 40%. And there's actually a lot of talk in the news at the moment around the next budget, which could hit capital gains tax really, really hard. So it might end up being greater than 40%. And by operating in a limited company structure, it means that your children or spouse could be a director within the company. And therefore, if you pass away, then they retain all the wealth within the company itself. So, so far, limited companies sound great and that you should choose it in every single scenario. No, that's not the case. I'm gonna talk through some of the reasons why a limited company might not be the best for you. So the first one is product availability. Now, I admit this is actually getting better day by day. It's been a little bit rocky this year due to the virus, but about five years ago, there were barely any limited company mortgages out there in the market because most people invested within their own personal name. But now because of all the tax changes, limited companies are way more attractive. And this means that over time, yes, there are more products available and therefore if there are more products, they're more competitive and the rates are gonna be lower in terms of interest. And one stat that I saw, I'm not sure if it's true, but around 70% of mortgages now are done through limited companies. The second is dividend tax rates. Now dividends used to be really attractive within limited companies, but the government again have taken an act to this in the past few years, it used to be about 5,000 and above that was completely tax free, whereas now it's only 2,000 pounds tax free before you then start paying some kind of level of tax, depending whether you're a basic, higher or additional rate taxpayer, which essentially means that if you choose a limited company based on the dividends alone, then it might not be as beneficial for you these days as it would have been five years ago. And lastly is the running costs that are associated with a limited company. Now, you have to file your annual accounts and your annual return every single year on time to HMRC. Now, annual accounts and returns are quite complex and I personally wouldn't be able to do it. And it's not something you can easily generate through QuickBooks or Xero. And you'll need a professional accountant and particularly within the property world, it's better to have a property specialist accountant. Now, this means that that comes with a premium price tag. Now, your accountants could cost anywhere between £800 for a year all the way up to £1,500-ish. It depends how big your company is, how many houses you have, and how complex the whole structure is. That being said, an accountant should be worth their weight in gold. Whatever you pay them, they should be able to pay themselves 10 times over with how tax efficient they can make your business. Hopefully the main message from this video is that there are many, many variables and there's no straightforward answer. It really depends on you, your strategies, your income, and your circumstances to determine whether a limited company is gonna be good for you versus investing in your own name. And it's that choice in strategy and the way you want to handle the money, whether you want to reinvest it within the company or pay yourself some kind of dividend or salary will determine what's truly best. As usual, I highly recommend go and speak to a real accountant. Hopefully this video has given you some inspiration and foundations to have a productive conversation with your accountant. So that's it for me. I hope you found this video useful. Please consider subscribing to the channel for loads more property videos and feel free to check out other videos like this one just here. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.